want to prove this theorem. Okay, whenever we divide a square into triangles having equal area, we always get an even number of triangles. And uh, we are proving it for the unit square. So if I have k triangles, then one is k times a. And a number is even if and only if the two norm is less than one. That is the main fact which we'll use. And so the two norm of A I want to show is strictly bigger than one. Okay, so uh, that is what we saw here. Okay, so what we will do now, we will slightly change, we will prove a little a stronger theorem. What is that? If we divide the unit square into triangles whose vertices have rational coordinates. So this condition we have added here, why is that? Because I want to use this two norm and this two norm I have only defined for rational numbers. Okay, so that's why that condition will keep uh, coming for some time that we want that the vertices of the triangles should have rational coordinates. Then we will show that. So notice we are not saying anything about equal areas. Okay, so this is a more general statement. Uh, then I'll just put this in brackets because it's not a very, uh, we will see, okay, into triangles. Then there is. at least one triangle uh, whose area has two norm. You know, we want this strictly bigger than one. Okay. So this condition about vertices, don't focus on that leave that aside. If you leave it aside, can you see that this theorem will imply Monsky's theorem or Monsky's theorem will follow from this? Okay, so in Monsky's theorem, what we are doing? We are dividing the square into triangles having equal area. But what this theorem is saying, one of the triangles will have two norm bigger than one. But because all the triangles have equal area, so this A will also be strictly bigger than one. Okay, so is this point clear? Because from now on, we will prove this theorem. Okay, because once we prove this, Monsky's theorem will follow. Okay, so once we prove this, then this A will have two norm bigger than one, then this K will have two norm less than one, and then it will be even, okay? So now we'll forget about original theorem. We will focus on this. Okay, so uh, when we want to look at the area of a triangle, okay, let us try to see what we can see about Let's take some triangle like this. And what is the special thing about this triangle? One of its vertices is the origin. Okay. So let us call this as AB, V is CD. Let us call this W as way to write. 
WS origin. Okay. Okay, let us look at this triangle. Now, if you see the area of the parallelogram spanned by U and V is so. So I will take the norm of the cross product. Okay. If I so I think of these vectors in R3. So I put a zero because cross product is defined only for vectors in R3. So if I take the cross product of these two vectors, then the norm of that is the area of the parallelogram. And so the area of the triangle, let us say this area is A. So this A will be half of this. Okay, and when you take the cross product, you will just get mod of AD minus BC. Because for finding cross product, you take the determinant. Okay, and so you get AD minus BC. So if you are not familiar with this, just accept it that if I have a triangle whose vertices are like this, then the area is half of AD minus BC. Okay. Okay. So now our aim is to show that this area has, we want to see when this A area will have two norm bigger than one. Right? Two norm should be greater than one. So suppose AD minus BC, suppose this has two norm greater or equal to one. Then what can I say? Then AD minus BC is nothing but the norm of two times A, which is norm two into norm A, which is, uh, let me write it separately. This is greater or equal to one, and then half of norm A is greater or equal to one, and this is, so norm A is greater or equal to two. But now remember the norm is taking values in this set, right? So if the norm is greater or equal to two, it means it is strictly bigger than one, okay? So that's what we wanted. So if this condition is true, then I can say that this is the same as saying norm is strictly bigger than one, okay? So, so remember our aim is to show this, that the two norm is bigger than one. Rest of it is there, but right now we want to find some conditions. So let me just write, we want to find the conditions on A, B, C, D. So that the two norm of A is bigger than one. That is what we are going to do first. Then we will come back to this theorem. Okay. So one condition we have found is this should be bigger than one. But now, now I want to find conditions so that this is bigger than one, bigger equal to one. Okay, so what we know from properties of the two norm. So suppose AD is strictly bigger than BC. Then what do I know? Then the norm of AD minus BC is equal to the bigger one, which is AD. Okay. This is what we have seen. And minus doesn't matter, right? Minus or plus, we get the same answer, right? For the norm. So we have this. And now if this is bigger than one, okay? So, so suppose AD is bigger than BC, then this is true. And 
if um, okay so then from using both of these we will get that ad minus bc is greater or equal to 1 okay so we are we are finding conditions in steps okay first condition was for norm a to be strictly bigger than one then if this is true this is equivalent these two are equivalent but now for this condition if both of these are true if this is true and if this is true okay then this condition is satisfied now we are not seeing equivalent we just want some condition which will imply this condition. Okay, and now again I want some condition which will imply both of these. Okay, so what are those? Mm, this will let's say this will be true. Okay. Uh, AB. Mm, So the points A, B, and C, D, they should satisfy two conditions. So, um, okay, so A, B should satisfy. Don't worry, I will explain how I'm writing these things. CD. It's not that I have a very good memory. And uh, CD. Okay, let us first check that if these two conditions are satisfied, then we will get these two conditions. Okay, so what is the norm of AD? It is norm A into norm D, but norm A is greater, norm D is also greater. So their product is strictly greater than norm B into norm C, which is norm of BC. Okay, so these two are going to give me this first one. And same way, if I multiply these two, I will get norm of AD and I'll get greater or equal to 1. So finally, we have got conditions on the coordinates of these two vertices. Okay, vertices of this U and V, sorry, coordinates of U and V. So if the coordinates satisfy, so coordinates of u satisfies this, coordinate of v satisfies this, then we can say that ad minus bc greater or equal to 1, which is same as saying norm of a is greater or equal to 1. Okay, this is, uh, there are many steps here. So just take your time. So because this is, uh, an important point. We want that the coordinates should satisfy these conditions. So now, instead of saying that coordinate satisfies this condition, I will use a short form. I will say that this coordinate has red color. Okay. It just means it satisfies this condition. And for this condition, I will say it has green color. Okay, this is just a short form. Okay, so and I will say that the point AB is uh, is having red color, or it is a red point, and point CD is a green point. Okay, 
So, so what we are seeing is that if this AB is a red point and if CD is a green point or the other way around, this could be, this could be red, this could be green. Okay, then this area is having two known bigger than one. Right now, I'm only seeing that much. Okay. Okay. Now, definitely, okay, let me first make my claim. Let me define another point. So, okay. So, let us say, um, so W, um, and what notation should I give? Um, let me just call it EF. Uh, okay, so this is another condition. You may think randomly I have written this, but uh, let me tell you what is the reason. So, so first of all, let me give you some, uh, of, uh, you know, courage that you don't have to remember all these things. Let us, uh, let me explain this in another way. We can see this um, by looking at the first maximum of the two norm. the tuple uh, x, y, 1. Okay. So let me explain what this means. So now, so I have x comma y is a element in q2. Okay. I have a point in q2. What color should I give it and so what we will do we will look at this tuple and take the two norms of norm two norm of x two norm of y two norm of one is one only so okay and i will look at the first maximum so so if the first maximum is at x. Okay, what does it mean? This means that, um, okay, what I will do is, I will explain to, I will explain this. First, let us look at some examples. Okay. After that, uh, I will, so let us um, see what colors the vertices of the unit square are given. Okay, so let us start with zero, zero. So the tuple I will get is zero, zero, comma one. So what are the two norms? Two norm of zero is zero. Two norm of zero is again zero. Two norm of one is one. So you see the first maximum is at one. Okay. So what about, don't worry, it will become clearer. Let us first finish this. So I have one zero. One zero means I have looking at 
101, right? So here I was looking at 001. Here I'm looking at 101. So norm of one is one, norm of zero is zero, norm of one is one. So you see the first maximum is at x in, in the first position. What about uh, zero one? So I have zero, one, one. Here the norm is zero, norm is one, norm is one. So the first maximum is at y right, in the second position. See here, you see why we are seeing first. One is all, this is also a maximum, but the first maximum is at y. Okay. And finally, we have one comma one. So one, one. So all of them have norm one. And then the first maximum is at x again. Okay, so this is to explain to you what I mean by first maximum at x, at y, and so on. Okay, so now if the first maximum is at x, what does it mean? That means um, then norm 2, this is for the 2 norm. So norm 2 of x is greater or equal to norm 2 of y, and norm 2 of x is greater or equal to 1. That is what it means first maximum is at x. Now, if the first maximum is at y, then what it means that norm 2 of x is strictly less than norm 2 of y and norm 2 of y is greater or equal to 1. Okay. And look at this one. First maximum is at y. So norm 2 of x should be strictly less. Norm 2 of 1 could be same. Okay. So, so you see that there is only one more possibility left. First maximum is at 1. Okay, I'm looking at this tuple x, y, and 1. Then what should happen? Norm x2 should be strictly less than 1. And norm y2 should also be strictly less than 1. Okay, that's what has happened in the first case. And 0, 0, 1. Okay, is, is it clear up till here? So now, um, notice that how is this related to our definitions? So what we have said, if AB satisfies this, then it should be red. But compare this with first maximum is at x. You see the same condition, okay? Norm A greater than or equal to B, norm X greater or equal to Y, norm X greater or equal to 1. So then this point should be a red point. Okay, here what we have for CD. So, so norm Y should be strictly greater, norm D strictly greater, and norm Y greater or equal to 1. So that means if first maximum is at Y, this is same as saying it is a green point. And for the blue point, both are strictly less than one, both are strictly less than one. Okay, so that's what I said, I meant, when I said you don't worry about these conditions, you just look at this graph, okay? look at the first maximum, and that will tell you the coloring. Okay? So we have understood how to color the vertices. I just have to remember the order. So first, so if I have x, y, and 1, so if it is here, then I say red. If it is here, I say green. And then I say blue. That's all you need to remember. 
RGB. Right? In computers, you have this RGB. So easy to remember. Okay. Okay, so we have colored the vertices like this. Okay, and you also notice that the origin had color blue. So, so this triangle is having vertices red, green, and blue. Okay. So, so right now what we had seen that if I have a triangle, okay, let me go ahead with this. So just observe here that this is a triangle with vertices red, green, and blue. So no two vertices have the same color, but only thing is special is this blue vertex is the zero origin. Okay. Just keep that in mind. And if I and for such a triangle, we have already proved that the two norm of A is strictly bigger than one. Okay. So what we will we'll make a definition. So if you are worried about this condition, vertices have rational coordinates. So then you can think like this, that first we are going to prove Monsky's theorem with this condition. Okay. So Monsky's theorem is saying this, whenever we divide into triangles having equal area, uh, and we'll also put this condition here that triangles whose vertices have rational coordinates. Okay, so first we will prove it with this extra assumption. Okay. Triangles whose vertices have rational coordinates and if they have equal area, then we will always get an even number of triangles. And afterwards, we will see that this is not a very a serious condition. Meaning you can work without it. But right now we will, why we need this? Because we are using the two norm and that we have only defined for rational numbers. So that's why we have to stick to rational coordinates. Okay, so don't worry more about that point. So a triangle whose vertices are rational coordinates, uh, I will put this in brackets, is called a rainbow triangle. Okay. Okay, so just make sure the definition is clear. No two vertices have the same color. So that means the vertices should be, so that is, it should be a uh, RGB triangle. Because we only have three colors. To prove a theorem, the okay, any rainbow triangle, the area will have two norm strictly bigger than one. Okay, and uh, for a proof, so 
notice that we have already seen this when the blue vertex is the origin. Okay, that is what we have seen over here. Over here. Okay. So this is a rainbow triangle. The blue vertex is the origin. And for such a triangle, we have already seen the area has two norm strictly bigger than one. Okay. So, so if I have another triangle, what should I do? So let me just, um, yeah, I think I'll just copy that picture. So here is our rainbow triangle. Uh, this was green. And now if I have an, another rainbow triangle somewhere else, suppose I have U, V and W. Okay, this is this is red, this is green, and this is blue. Okay, so now if I subtract W, then I will get this this triangle. So if I can now and both the areas, because I've just translated, both will have area A, right? So I just maybe. Okay, so for such a triangle, I know the theorem. We have already proved this for such a triangle. So what is left now, if I can show that this U minus W will also be red. Okay, if I can show this is red and if I show that this is green, then I can use the fact that we have already seen this for such a triangle. Is it clear? So I take a rainbow triangle, I subtract the blue coordinate. If I get another rainbow triangle, then I'm done. Okay, what else, what are we doing? See, we have, we have given a coloring to any point in rational key coordinates, any point in Q2, I have colored it either red, green, or blue, right? I have done this for any point in Q2. Now, if a triangle has different colored vertices, then I call it a rainbow triangle. And if I have a rainbow triangle, when I subtract W, I will get this triangle with the same area. In fact, congruent, it's a congruent triangle, okay? Now, if I can show that this coordinate will be red and this coordinate will be green, then I know this area has, if we show this, then the two norm of A is strictly bigger than one. And therefore, for this also. Okay, so now I only have to show this. So, So you can remember it like this, that red minus blue, I want to show is red. Green minus blue, I want to show it is green. Okay. Just keep that in mind. So, so let's do it for red minus blue. So AB is red and CD is blue. Then I want to show A minus C 
B minus D is red. That's what we want to do. So what is the meaning? AB is red. That means mod A and mod A is. So if you don't remember these, just accept it. We will, you can check it later. And for blue, it means both are strictly less than one. If you just think of the graph, you will remember this. Okay, and now to show it is red, what I have to do? So that is, now E, this should satisfy the two conditions. So A minus C to I want to show this. So, um, is it clear what we are doing? Just uh, I want to check. Okay, if we show this, then this theorem will be proved. Any rainbow triangle has two norm greater than one. So, let's try to see this. Okay. So now look at this thing. Second, second condition. So you, from these two conditions, we see that norm A is greater than one and one is greater than norm C. So norm A is strictly bigger than norm C. And so norm of A minus C is equal to the bigger one. And that I know is again greater or equal to one. Okay. So we have proved the second part. So the first part, let us see that now, the proof of this. So norm of A minus C, that will be norm A, right? But now norm A, I have two things. It's bigger than B and bigger than one. So we will use both of them. First, let us use bigger than B. Norm A is greater or equal to B, okay? And for B, uh, if I can say this is, I want to prove this. I want to prove this. So if I can say that this is greater equal to mod B minus D by two, then I'll be done. So what do I know? This is true when, not always, but if B is the bigger one. If B is the bigger one, then I can say this. It's same way, if I want to look at the other one, again, I know it is same as norm A from this observation. Now, norm A is bigger than one also. So, one, and now one is bigger than norm C. Or I can directly use this. Norm A is bigger than norm C. That is given to oh, that has gone in the same way. Okay, bigger than one, one is bigger than C, so this is true. Okay, norm A is bigger than norm C, and now what is the other case left when? Sorry, I don't want C. So norm A is greater or equal to one, and one is strictly bigger than norm D, this thing we haven't used yet. One is bigger than norm D. Okay, so what is the other case if norm B is strictly less than norm D? So in this case, norm of B minus D is equal to norm D. Okay, so we have proved this thing in both cases. Is it clear? So this says that red minus a blue point is again a red point. Anyway, you can show that green point minus a blue point will again be a green point. Okay, so I can erase these two 
and then I know for such a triangle, norm A is greater than 1. So we have proved that any rainbow triangle has two norm bigger than 1. Any rainbow triangle has two norm strictly bigger than 1. Okay, so the in-between steps, if you don't follow fully, just uh, accept this. Okay, this is the main thing. Uh, I mean, checking this is not very difficult. So, so you can assume this result. And now remember what was our main result, which we wanted to show. It was this. Okay, if we divide the unit square into triangles whose vertices have rational coordinates, then there is at least one triangle whose area has two known bigger than one. Okay, let me copy this. So this is our theorem. Remember, from this we can prove Mont's case theorem. Okay, so that's why now there is nothing about equal area. Okay, Mont's case theorem with this condition: vertices have rational coordinates. So now I will just change the statement of this theorem. Instead of saying there is a triangle whose area has two norm greater than one, this last part. I can replace it by, I know that any rainbow triangle has area whose two norm is bigger than one. Okay, so I will replace the last part by has at least one rainbow triangle. Is it clear? So this is what is left for us to prove. Okay, if we prove this, that in the unit square, when I divide into triangles, then one of them has to be a rainbow triangle.